Since the dawn of humanity, people have contemplated what makes man different from the creatures that inhabit this world with him, or even if he is different at all. A philosopher would most likely say something along the lines of morality, but a scientist would point to the anatomical differences in the human brain, or even the lack thereof. One such region, which for the majority of recent history was believed to distinguish us from all other animals, was our frontal lobe, or to be more specific, our prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex in humans is the most anterior portion of the frontal lobe. Currently, we understand that the prefrontal cortex is linked to complex cognitive behavior, personality, decision making, and helping to control social behavior. The simplest way to define the function of the prefrontal cortex is what scientists call executive function, i.e. regulating many different areas of the brain through interconnected neural pathways. One can think of the prefrontal cortex as the control tower of the brain. It determines how you use stored knowledge in practical situations. Pioneering neuroscientists Joaquin Fuster and Patricia goldman Rakish show that the prefrontal cortex functions to represent information not currently in one's environment, and the role this plays in creating our, quote, mental sketchpad. Now you may be wondering how the form of the prefrontal cortex is related to its function. Unlike an enzyme that has an active site with a specific conformational shape that will bind to a corresponding substrate of which will fit, the function of the prefrontal cortex is more related to the volume and cortical thickness of the gray matter that it is comprised of. In 2014, a meta-analysis by Professor Nicole Wan from the University of Arizona revealed that larger prefrontal cortex volume and cortical thickness were associated with better executive performance. The implications of this study are quite remarkable. The larger and thicker the prefrontal cortex, the more efficient one's executive performance. Now, the prefrontal cortex in humans is not fully developed until a person's mid-twenties, meaning teenagers have a relatively immature prefrontal cortex compared to mature adults. And some would go as far as saying that this and a teenager's tendency to process information with the amygdala might explain stereotypical teenage behavior. Now it is no surprise to most that as we age, we begin to lose some of the cortical thickness associated with the prefrontal cortex as well as other areas of the brain. As of now, this is an inescapable symptom of aging, but recent scientific discoveries have shown that we are not completely powerless to time's inescapable grasp, and there are ways in which we can decrease this natural neural atrophy. The scientific community has recently turned its attention to the age-old practice of meditation which is seen by many as a spiritual practice which can induce altered states of consciousness. Studies conducted on meditation and the results it has on the brain have shown increased gyrification or folding of the brain, a thickening of the prefrontal cortex, as well as increased functional connectivity between the prefrontal cortex and the parts of the brain associated with attention and concentration. Granted, meditation also causes shrinking in the amygdala, a part of the brain which is associated with anxiety, fear, and stress, our natural fight-or-flight responses. One specific study, conducted by Sarah Lazar, a neuroscientist at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School, noted an increase in brain volume after meditating on average 30 minutes a day for 8 weeks. The benefits commonly associated with meditation stem from anatomical changes in the regions of the brain such as the prefrontal cortex, which denotes an increase and decrease in neural connectedness with other regions of the brain as well as an overall increase in cortical thickness. Some of the noted benefits of meditation include reduced stress and anxiety, mood regulation, increased self-awareness, improved information processing and decision making, and improved empathy and compassion as well as a whole host of other benefits. These should sound familiar because many of these are functions we often associate with the prefrontal cortex and the areas of the brain with which it communicates. As the prefrontal cortex changes on the neural level, so too does its function. Not necessarily changing what it does for us, but changing how it does it and how efficiently it does so, which can result in quite significant changes in our perception and thought processes. We as a species have only just began to understand the brain on a neural level. The brain is by far the most complex natural structure in the universe, and we are far from being able to say we know how it all works. Although I hope I have helped you to understand the prefrontal cortex and how we currently understand it.